watch Heat Wave before anyone else? Well, there's an easy way to do that. Just back us up on Patreon at patreon.com slash half empty e tank and be the first to watch the episodes. Hi, welcome back for the last segment for this week's episode of Heat Wave. And we're going to talk about something that I've been kind of obsessed with and spending way too much money on, and that is retro gaming consoles, both new and old. Nice. So, um, lately. Brittany, are you excited for this? I'm super excited. <laughs> Brittany I'm is tired like, of me buying I'm like, these. What came in the mail this time, Brian? What expensive thing did you buy? And then he tells me about it, and then I glaze over, and I'm like, <laughs> "Sounds cool." And then I leave. <laughs> A Philips CDI. Oh, wonderful! I've always wanted one. <laughs> That's not always true. I do get you some things for your N64 sometimes. Yeah, you did get me a thingy that I'm not sure. A I'm rumble pack to talk about on the internet if it's illegal. <laughs> No, you can talk about it. I've got, I hope we can talk about them because the three of them are sitting on the desk. What if the please don't watch Nintendo the FBI? <laughs> what if the Nintendo FBI is watching <laughs> and they arrest us? The NBI, the NBI. <laughs> God, <laughs> Nintendo. I, you know, if anyone, if anyone would do they that, have the it's Nintendo, Nintendo SWAT team. Yeah, they just come in and rip all, rip all my Pokemon cross stitches <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> Tell me it's copyright infringement. They're just like they've got a knife and they're just slashing through all of them. Yeah. I think I would legit cry if I saw that. Like Britney's work and shit, I would like be super pissed. <laughs> No. But no, let's start with the one retro console that we've actually done stuff with with yours. Your retro console is a legit like Nintendo yeah, 64 that a, we've modded. It's a Jungle Green in 64 that we modded. Um, it has for the HDMI, HDMI output. output. Uh-huh. And it has the Ultra HDMI uh, mod. It has and the Ultra HDMI mod. <laughs> we did some LED mods on it. And we LED also mods. have an EverDrive mod. Wait, does it, does it do RGB? Yes, it does. Roy G. Biv. Uh, colorful man. Yes. <laughs> but no, my N64 is really cool. Um, they also, my favorite part is that the guy took it apart and boiled it and like made it really nice and clean and then put it back together. He boiled? That's yeah. the way to get it clean. Yeah. 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 That gets all the dirt and everything yeah. off so of it. So that made me really excited and I just want to like pay him to all boil everything I own and just clean it really good. <laughs> it's so satisfying. Hmm. But he doesn't take commissions anymore or something because he's he like, only does certain things now I, yeah i saw a video of a uh, person who bought a uh, game boy color on ebay for like two dollars because it was like really fucked up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. had a lot of bad it was atomic purple had a lot of yellowing he put a bath of mm-hmm. uh, basically uh, uh alcohol. alcohol yeah, yeah. and uh, wrapped some uh, leds set it to ultraviolet and then yeah let it go and then apparently that that does it too yeah that's yeah, how that's, that's cool. the de-yellowing process yeah um so a lot of super nintendos go through that process the occasional dreamcast goes through that process uh this uh famicom uh av unit went through that process oh, the it's family computer cleaned. yeah so um squeaky a, a lot of people w- might recognize this as a, an nes top loader but it's uh actually a japanese nes top loader the reason why i got that is because the japanese nes top loader had the classic uh nintendo hookup on the back that everyone's super nintendo got but the american one only had rf out exclusively mm. and with this this one was way easier to mod to have rgb out and work with the frame meister so so that's the same connector it's been on since uh, up until i think the this, gamecube yep and that was the beginning yeah. of it that was yeah. the first system to have it cool um so i got that and that's why we have a famicom instead of a regular mm-hmm. top loader we did that. We, most of all of these beginnings started with one weird ass thing. So I was always an emulation guy. Yeah. You still are. Yeah. Um, and when we started Mega Marathon, we'd have all these speedrunners, all these people who needed <clears throat> specific equipment to get things done. Right. And also, like, for legality reasons, every game that we have is a legit copy of the right. game. Yeah. Um, so when we run things, like even if we are running something through like an EverDrive, for example, we, we keep, own we a, copy, o- we of own a copy of everything yeah. Mega Man related. Yeah. And so um, with that, though, we had to start getting all these weird machines. Yeah. So uh, almost every machine that I don't have like a weird HDMI version of it, mm-hmm. there's a modded version. So our GameCube's HDMI modded, our Dreamcast is HDMI modded, the N64 is <coughs> HDMI modded. Yeah. Everything else we use a Frame Meister. Um, but lately, I've been addicted to a single company called Analog. Okay. What is Analog? <clears throat> Analog 
This makes, episode brought to you by Analog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pro- I mean, I've paid them enough money the last couple of months. See if you can get an affiliate link. Right? I'm going to. I'm going to hit them up. Um, but I recently picked up their uh, me- uh, Mega SG. This uh, console right here allows you to play Sega Genesis games and Sega Master System games and Sega Game Gear games. It has HDMI out. And it just, it just fucking works. Can I touch? Yeah, go ahead. And it's absolutely one of my favorite consoles. It's built <laughs> super solid. And it's got an SD card slot. Yeah, yeah, which allows you to do other <clears throat> things of various legality, legal uh, purposes. Um, but uh, what I've done It's more is, solidly built than I expected. Exactly. That right there is a $200 reproduction cart. Now... Or console, but the difference is instead of it being like an emulation system, it's not. It's using an FPGA core to emulate the hardware. Oh, <clears throat> interesting. <clears throat> so it just works. It's a wow. it just works. And it the same thing works. here with the Super NT, which is the Super Nintendo. Um, it's the basically the same whole concept, except uh, the one difference is the Mega SG had one extra feature. This would allow you to work with your Sega CD, your real Sega CD. Wow. Because it has a little feature right here, so it could actually connect <laughs> right into the real <laughs> Sega CD, which was very Sega of them. Does does it also work with the 32X? It does not work with the 32X currently. Mm. Now, something that I've already ordered, and it's on the way, <laughs> I'm sorry, Brittany, is the analog DAC. Which Sweet is Jesus. a digital analog <laughs> converter. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what it does is it goes uh, does outputs from the HDMI here. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to put a 32X on it, connect it to the DAC, and then that will have an analog output signal that still works. Mm. And all of these are pretty much near perfection when it comes to the hardware output and how it <clears throat> reacts just like the original hardware. <clears throat> I am kind of amazed at how much technology and understanding went into reverse engineering this stuff and making a shittier gameplay experience yeah like in some ways it is for examples you can uh you can get it to where like for example there's no slowdown with like an nes game or something like that that is a thing but it's uh, you can and you can set it those settings, but people consider that part of the experience. Yeah, yeah. So like Mega Man Three, for example, has a shit ton of slowdown. Yeah, and people can't play it when it has doesn't have it. it. Doesn't They're have just that. like they don't have that pacing. Now, these are FPGA consoles. This right here, on the other hand, is just a straight up re uh recasing of a console or a handheld console. So this is my GBA consoleizer. I just got this. Brittany, and- have you ever thought to yourself, I want to play a handheld game, but I want to play it on a big TV and I don't want it to be small. Um every fucking day of my life. Well, let me interest you <laughs> in this Game Boy Advance consoleizer. You want to know the first thing I played on it was Shrek 2. <laughs> the movie. Not the the movie. movie. Not the game. Me and Brittany, the very first thing we did is we streamed Shrek 2. Shrek 2 on the Game Boy Advance video cart. Yep. Which is the entire movie in 160p. And it moves at 15 frames per second. Um, it will give you a headache after watching the it whole took, thing. It took a while to watch it because we would look at each other. It was so breaks. pixelated. I'm pretty sure I could cross stitch any frame from that movie. I think you should. <laughs> Just do a flip book, a fabric flip book of oh Shrek my 2. God, oh my God, that would be amazing. <laughs> It'd be or, hilarious considering how off the colors are. <laughs> or you could just make like giant patches of shots of Shrek 2. <laughs> All pixelated. Like, <laughs> like this is from the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Honestly, I would be thrilled if you did any of this bullshit. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, that's way too much work, but oh my god. We thought that the 151 original Pokemon was going to be my magnum opus. <laughs> nope. Nope. It's doing a fabric flip book of Shrek 2. The movie. <laughs> the movie. Um, but that's not it. <sighs> That's, that's not all. <laughs> One of the things that I bought this for was so that me, Hutch, Brittany, and Juggle Boy could do a four-player run of the uh, Legend of Zelda Four Swords. Mm-hmm. 
and have capture all five sources. So there's a Game Boy, and then four ga- uh, I mean four Game Boy sources and one GameCube source. And we were going to capture all five of those uh, during our playthrough and do like some special let's play, but that is unlikely. <laughs> so you're not going to buy three more of these? No, because on um, I've had actually a little bit of trouble with the video output on this thing. It's not um, this thing has been it kind of works. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have to go through specific area, uh, areas for it to, like, the HDMI to work with, like, different products. That being said, the people that made these two consoles, the Super Nintendo Mega uh, SG, they are coming out with a new handheld called the Analog Pocket, hmm. which plays Game Boy Advance games, Game Boy games, Atari Lynx games. Um, it plays just about every handheld you've ever played, Game right. Gear, everything. Mm-hmm. And it is going to be are you excited to own four of these um what's the thing that you just bought last night oh well i bought so this is the thing that they they you the one of their first projects was the uh analog nt mm-hmm. the analog nt was a uh nes where they actually took the uh board of an nes kind of like this gba consoleizer and they added hdmi to it okay. in a really nice pristine package it was like a thousand dollars yeah um, they came out later <laughs> with another thing called the NT Mini, mm-hmm. which was an FPGA core Nintendo NES, like these other ones, but it had a metal aluminum casing and it had both HDMI out and analog output. And because of all that, it was pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sold out and now it was going for the last like couple of years, they haven't been making it. And it's gone up from like $1,000 to $2,000 to $3,000 sold on eBay because it's such a really great piece of machine. Yeah. They just said, okay, we're going to do one final run. And I bought it. I was just like, fuck it. I sold my AVS yesterday. Like as my AVS was my, my, uh, it was pretty new. <clears throat> my, uh, like, I just bought it, and then they just announced they were doing a final run. And you were like, ah! Oh! So yeah. I sold it to, like, make up some of the difference <laughs> of it. But yeah, so I've bought just about every analog pocket so or analog I was like, make it product faces. I can. He literally got this one thing in three but weeks ago. <laughs> That's pretty it's pretty. A, and but like a switch, it docks and you can play it on TV. Space docks. Oh, nice. So yeah, it actually Okay, I hadn't seen it. the dock for some reason. Yeah, the huh. dock actually uh, Ask him what his favorite game is to play on all of these. What's your favorite game to play on all of these? Shrek 2? I don't no. know. What? Sonic? Will of Fortune. <laughs> okay, so that's fair. Um, I have been playing all of these like TV game shows on all of these lately. And I have played through Will of Fortune on the Super Nintendo Deluxe Edition uh, probably about five or six times now. Wow. I, I come home and I just, just fucking chill and You're play just Wheel of Fortune. just relax with a good old-fashioned game of Wheel of Fortune. It is we just, so we just have that awesome. really fun like 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 uh, game show game night and then you just never stop playing yeah. <laughs> since well, that's no strange. that is no i bought so many i have so many game show cards now wow that's um, awesome and so many different versions of jeopardy oh man would you like, like a copy of deal or no deal no. <laughs> because <laughs> you already have it you bought me that i did for, you got two what, three copies for two dollars something or some like that shit? yeah it's like this is insane <laughs> Walmart's basically like bundling like five for like two dollars. Get rid of them. We got too much Howie Mandel here. He's got to go. We had a really great this place stream, is though. now haunted because of all of these pictures of Howie Mandel. It was such a bizarre fucking game, and it's so bad. It's a Nintendo it's real DS game. Bad. I've streamed it once when I got my 3ds. Hey, my 3D modded 3ds for capture unit. Um, I played fucking no deal, uh, deal or no deal on stream and for like a total of 15 God. minutes and I had people watch the internet's weird. You guys are weird and we, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching us. <laughs> like, but, some, around yeah. it. <laughs> but I'm he weird. The rip cord on that conversation <laughs> yeah. real quick. But uh, yeah, still so, my favorite stream moment is you taking a, a pair of scissors and then put, putting it through the hole of another pair of scissors, whirling it around and saying, "Guys, guys, I am putting this all the internet. And you are watching it." <laughs> I 
went to the bathroom during the craft stream and I was like, hey, Brian, you need to go over for a couple minutes while I go pee. And that's what he did. My just, favorite internet moment is you just sitting all alone in a room and you just take peanut butter and start spraying it on your face. It was the best highlight. It was way better. There was than like what I no did. context to it because I just started the, the highlight where like you were just sitting out by yourself and just. Yeah. <laughs> Brian so, said, keep me entertained. I was like, okay. <laughs> so that started from uh, someone paid me money to turn me into a sandwich. That's a fetish. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what I did was I put peanut butter on two slices of bread, right? Mm. And I did a dance and slapped them on each side of my head. And I was a sandwich after that. How fun was that to clean out of your beard? Hair and beard. It was real bad. Well, while he was cleaning it out, that's when Hutch decided to sit down and have yeah. a double Hutch show. Yeah. But yours was so much better because you were just staring into the camera and smearing <laughs> peanut butter onto your head. And I walked in. I was like, what the what fuck link. is happening? Oh, yeah. We have a highlight. Mm, kept it casual. And so it was trying so to do. bizarre. That's the one thing I do miss about streaming at your house right now. I was like, just random ass shit like that would happen. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not up to par on that. No, you're usually just yelling at me like, you're too loud! <laughs> yeah. I, I do miss all the, um, <laughs> um Frank uh, being an asshole, and then you guys having to put him in the sweater, and that just makes me <laughs> so amused. <laughs> Emotional support sweater. Yeah. And that's my favorite video game, retro video game console. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I'm really excited about these. I've gone down a deep rabbit hole. So th- I have a complaint about that one, which yes. you said plays Sega Master System games, uh-huh. but it doesn't play all Sega Master System games because I don't see a card reader it on it. It does have oh. one. I have an adapter for the card reader. I can pull that out, but I just didn't want to pull it out. <laughs> He's so proud. Also, this right here. He'll pull it out. Also, this right here is a another EverDrive, but what this also has is an FPGA inside of it, oh. and this allows you to not have to use a Sega CD to play Sega CD <laughs> games. Oh. So this is my this plays Sega CD games, Master System games, even the card ones without any extra hardware. That's wild. So I've been using that. These EverDrives have lots of really great extra tools, and there's so many great like Sega CD games that I would have passed on if I like didn't have this does the uh super nt mini have a card slot um the super nt mini or the, the one that's coming out uh the, the nt pocket, mini the pocket no the nt mini the, the 500 dollars. it has a famicom and an nes slot and an expansion port for the famicom disc drive okay so it does but it doesn't have like a card slot like like sd card slot oh yeah they, they all do this yep. one does too okay they all have that Gotcha. They okay. all have the SD card slot. So technically, like, if you jailbreak them, you don't need an EverDrive, but I still use them. Yeah. So. Okay. So if you jailbreak this one, I could potentially all of them, play. All Sega. of them have jailbreaks. Oh. So like, I could play Sega CD games on this boy. Technically. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, but through yeah. the SD card. Yeah. And it's not as ideal. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, if you were playing... Uh, like a like a ROM off of a card on this thing, mm-hmm. um, it would still be treated as if it were uh running it off of the actual hardware mm-hmm. rather than mm-hmm. an emulated. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so there you can actually change. The, uh, there's cores that you install. Mm-hmm. So for example, I have a Genesis Master System Colelco Vision and Game Gear core installed on this one, uh-huh. and there's all those all are just turned the system from Genesis to those systems. Yeah. And that's how it, it runs. So it's not really emulation. It's really bizarre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. But I'm going to nerd corner. I'm starting to get a little bit of FOMO <laughs> for for that uh, for that NES one. Uh-oh. Hutch has FOMO. I really don't need, I really don't need it. Really don't need See if they have three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Well, guys. Go on AliExpress. Buy a case of them. <laughs> God. So I'll just go on Wish. Why not? <laughs> so this company is based out of Seattle. Okay. First of all, it's an American company. It's America. America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. They, pay, they paid in America to do all this programming. They Thank you, Ketris. They America. paid in America. So anyways, that's it. Bye, everybody. We'll Bye. see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.